Okay, hey, welcome back. Uh, Fort of Fail Army is here with another news update for you and a small rant. Uh, so we spent, uh, well, yesterday getting knackered and not doing much of anything. And then we waited an extra day, a whole extra day, be not because we were hungover or anything, but because we wanted some extra news. Uh, just a whole heaping extra bit of news uh, in, one, in one day's time. Uh, and... To our surprise, it was not that much in terms of very interesting, great news. Um, so it's going to be a very, you know, light episode. It's full of fail on the light uh, today. Um, uh, so we're going to have to apologize about that right off the bat. And uh, just because of that, you know, it's, we found some really weird, interesting news. I mean, there's, you know, some good news, but then there's some weird, interesting news. And it's just all because of that and, and not having much of it now and, and us coming in with late. It's like, it's, I'm just, I'm flustered. I'm all flustered now. Can you tell me being flustered? I'm flustered here. There's, there's flustering all over the place. It's gotten on my shoe. I'm just, wait, hold on. It's flustering in my shoe. Yeah. Flustering in my shoe. <clears throat> it's flustering in my shoe, and now I'm trying to figure out what exactly that I'm going to be doing for the rest of the night, besides reporting on all this awesomeness. Um, yes, that, that's that's <clears throat> that's right. We're now reading a script. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, can you? We, we'll just get on. Get on with it. We're going to get on with it. Um, Oh god, just can, can, can we get on with it, please? Hey, okay, so uh, Fort of Fail Army is going to keep it short, sweet, and somewhat terrible here for you all at the same time. It's kind of our own proprietary special blend that we like to do for you people here. Anyway, so uh, we're going to start off with some of that weird, interesting news that caught our eye earlier. So, uh, it's not directly VR related, but it's still very big news. Um, Sean Layden, uh, chairman of Worldwide Studios for Sony uh, PlayStation, is stepping down. That's right, we're going we're gonna to lead with that. Also, you know him, you, you love him, uh, you hate him, or you love him. Uh, I, I'm all for, I love him twice and hate him, and uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, Post Malone. We've talked about uh, musical uh, artists being in the shared music space and VR for quite some time, and they're only getting better and stronger, and like I said, it's going to become more common to stay. Basically, Post Malone is having a venue. We're going to talk about that. Also, uh, we're talking about the uh, Oculus. Uh, still the Oculus Connect. There's still some uh, contention about whether or not the Quest is going to make the S or Rift S obsolete thanks to the, the tethering now that you can tether and uh, basically have it sort of like a, a share the regular library from Quest uh, and um, uh, the normal Oculus Rift S, excuse me, or Rift library. And then, for those of you who are too much of a wanker to remember that before Onslaught, The Walking Dead Onslaught was announced, that there was another VR title in the Walking Dead universe called Saints and Sinners that was announced. And now this is slated to come out early next year, and we're going to talk about that and how embarrassed we are that we even forgot about it. Um, also, we're going to give you an update on the stretch goals that were completed for Lo-Fi, including finger tracking and possible PlayStation 5 uh, update support. Um, and, of course, the long-delayed uh, Golem finally gets a hard release state. We're going to talk about that. So uh, join us. Here we go. We're going to get right into it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Caught in a loop. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we and we, we got some news. So the first bit of news, as we talked about, is uh, the departure of Mr. Layden. Mr. Layden, uh, as we said, uh, who is the uh, worldwide chairman, I uh, sorry, chairman of Worldwide Studios, uh, has uh, basically abruptly said, that's it. Or, Throw in the towel, cold it quits, whatever you want to say it is, it's, it's, it's happened. He's been with the company since 1987. Um, that's a long time. Um, this is the guy you see on, you know, the stand when there's expos going on about. You know, maybe he was sad that he didn't get to do an expo this year. I don't know, maybe he doesn't have faith in the PS5. I don't know what's going on. Maybe there's an internal power struggle. You know, maybe, uh, maybe, oh, I know what it is. He's upset that the Area 51 raid didn't happen because he was expecting someone to run out with, you know, Space Age Alien Tech, which he was then going to bribe and use for the PS5. That's it. That's it. I figured it out. Of course, I would be, I would be upset about that too. Um, but you know, what? Uh, it's, it's not something to, to do this over, you know, and that's, that's possibly a variable, a very horrible joke, variable. Uh, it's it's a new mashup, new new word I've invented. Um, check check it out. It'll be in the dictionary soon. I promise. Um, so he resigned as executive personnel at the end of September. That's rather recent. This is now October, so of course it means he's gone, right? He hasn't given any details to the reason for the departure as of yet. And there's been no mention of his replacement. However, there's been a tweet 
and it, this is actually from PlayStation themselves, and it says, with a great emotion that we announce that Worldwide Studios Chairman Sean Layden will be departing SIE. His visionary leadership will be greatly missed. We wish him success in future endeavors and are deeply grateful for his years of service. Thanks for everything, Sean. PlayStation, September 30th, 2019. So there you have it. Um, again, this is not directly uh, VR-related, but... It, uh, it's something that I felt needed to be shared as he was very adamant about it and he felt like, you know, there was a lot of potential there. He said it several times. Um, now, when it comes to VR itself, SIE isn't sort of like following rivals like Oculus and HTC with a lot of new and improved headsets, you know, Series 1, 2, 3, Mark, different, whatever have you. Um, basically, it did hint, though, at a new model, especially with patents showing better resolution, eye tracking, and wireless connectivity. There you go. That'd be awesome if that did happen. Um, so, well, while this happened, and I don't think there's anything else that's going to come of it, uh, it's just something I felt, we felt, that it should be brought up. So now you know. Mm. Okay, so our next article is going to be about more music artists in the digital world. Uh, no, not with just uh, with you know streaming and and the digital libraries. We're talking about the actual virtual world and virtual reality. Um, last one we reported on, I want to say, was Billie Eilish and or Lindsey Sterling, um, and uh, this has to do with some more of that type of uh, along the lines of uh, if you will, have you? Uh, oh, just it's basically that shade. Um, and the Oculus venues has been killing. It as late with a series of live musical performances over the past six months. A popular VR streaming platform is basically hosted a lot of live performances from a surprising amount of major acts. Um, basically, uh, like we said, Billy Ellish was the most one of the most recent ones. Uh, there was uh, HER, her, who performed live on the platform as well. Um, but on October 18th, you will be able to get Malone's stop in Raleigh, North Carolina as part of the Runaway Tour. So uh, if you have the Oculus or if you go to the Oculus venues, you will be able to check that out. And that is right, we're talking about Post Malone. Um, Oculus Venues, as you know, is available to download free on both Oculus Go and Oculus Quest headsets. Sorry, Rift, Rift F's users. The artist will be performing tracks off his latest album, uh, Hollywood Bleeding, I want to say is what it is, which is second to reach number one on the Billboard Top 200. Um, so, now you know. Uh, again, this was going to be something that's going to happen a lot more and more with a diverse cast of musical artists coming, you know, to the shared space. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, you should. Okay, so the next news article is still out of Oculus Connect, and I know we've talked about Oculus Connect, but one of the things we did not talk about which came out of it, which was still big news because a lot of people are wondering what's going to happen now with Oculus uh, Quest and Rift S, because tethering. If you're using a USB uh, 3 cable, you can tether to uh, you, uh, I mean uh, Oculus uh, Quest and then basically you can cross libraries so then you will be able to play the Rift and Rift S uh, library of games on the Quest. Now this does not change anything because it is still using the onboard uh, mobile graphics processing unit, the GPU on the Quest. It does not, I, I want to say, uh, uh, pick up any of the extra uh, loading from the uh, rig PC, or at least I have not mentioned that. Um, and that's basically asking a lot of people of will this phase out the Rift and Rift S, what's going to happen to it, will support go away? Um, but again, there's a lot of things that they say. In fact, uh, John Carmack is saying that the Rift S is still more comfortable, has lower latency, um, and it does not get compressed graphics. It also has a five camera tracking. So of course there are benefits to you know one and the other, but now um, you will be able to almost use the uh, Quest as almost like a native VR headset. So there you go. That's one of the things that people have been talking about and still, um, I don't know, it created a bit of controversy. I don't think they meant to do that, but there you go. So, um, if anything else happens about this, well, I don't know if we'll care, but we'll definitely bring you the news. Yeah. Okay, so the next news article we have comes from uh, the Walking Dead universe. And no, this is not to do with Walking Dead Onslaught. This is another VR title that was actually announced, I want to say, prior to the actual announcement of uh, the Walking Dead uh, Onslaught, and it's called Saints and Sinners. Now, this has been uh, relatively kept in the dark, and I don't know, I, I want to have an idea why, because this has a, a unique and original storyline. It might have unique gameplay features as well. Now, this is slated for January 23rd, 2020 launch, but it does not have a confirmed 
uh, platform release. We do know that this will more than likely release on Oculus, but we don't know if it's an Oculus exclusive. Uh, I want to say there were demos on the Rift S, but we don't know if it will come out on Quest. We do not know if this will be on Steam, and definitely do not know if this will come to PlayStation VR. Now, this is a title that is loosely set uh, in the, the Walking Dead universe, but is not tied to the graphic novel or show. Um, it's set in uh, dilapidated and flooded New Orleans, and there's a specific group that you're working with and uh, possibly against or for, but uh, don't want to give too much away in terms of spoilers. Now, uh, this is a game that is uh, key toward survival. So don't expect yourself to be sort of like a walking commando. Um, you can't just one hit melee zombies, or at least most of the time. Um, found out that you can even kill zombies with spoons. And of course, there are different me melee weapons and of course guns and maybe a gadget here too. Um, but, I mean, you're, you're, you're using your entire body. So you have a backpack full of gear on your back. You have a, a weapon, you know, around the, the side of your hip. Uh, you have a flashlight that you have to shake when it's not working. You have to constantly look at your wrist watch to, to tell when the time is, to see when the bell towers are going to ring to move zombies around the town. Um, it, it just does have a campaign that's supposed to be about 15 hours long. Um, no multiplayer, definitely none that has been announced at least. And again, this is more on sort of uh, survival. Uh, so we'll see what that happens. We'll see what the story is about. Um, now, basically, this this has a lot of uh, moments for great gameplay. Definitely for a good storytelling. Uh, it definitely comes from a good pedigree. Um, and this is not going to be a, a hoity-toity, you know, first-person shooter. This is not supposed to be uh, an RPG. And this is definitely not your point-and-click, you know, uh, telltale-style Walking Dead. May they rest in peace. Anyway. Uh, Saints and Sinners, again, is due out on uh, January 23rd. That's early next year. Uh, again, we don't know what platforms this is for, but we do know it will be on Oculus. So uh, you can check that out when it drops. Uh, be a good little lad, and that's right around the corner. Hey, we're back with a new Kickstarter update, but this one has to do with Lo-Fi. That's right. If you remember, we talked about Lo-Fi a few casts ago, which was an awesome uh, sort of uh, future punk uh, VR title. Uh, in sort of an open sandboxy style world where you are a lo-fi cop. Um, so we're, we wanted a small update to let you know that this has hit some of its stretch goals. Um, finger tracking and even possible PlayStation 5 support. Now this is interesting because we did bring this up during the cast about how, well, the PS5, or the, I should say the PSVR 2, has not really been announced, but they did let the cat out of the bag. And now that basically what they're saying is... Uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to read this verbatim. Another stretch goal that we technically says was hit was the PSVR support, just not on the PS4. We will, however, support the yet unofficially or announced next generation PlayStation console and VR headset when it arrives. Mm -hmm. uh, the main limitation for us right now is not as much the power of the PS4 as the PS Move controllers. We will undoubtedly be able to support the PS5 VR, as we assume Sony will be updating their controllers for the next generation. So there you have it. Again, they're sort of giving more fan to the flame that there will be a PSVR 2 on the way. Um, also, the team at LoFi has uh, confirmed that they will include finger tracking support for the Oculus Touch and Valve Index controllers. Um, so basically, it helps form factor the world. Uh, and there will also be maybe more, but there's only I want to say. Actually, I think the the start, key start is over. So. Some of the stretch goals have been hit, not all, but still there's enough to go around. Uh, this title will be releasing next year, and any updates or news that comes out of this, we will let you know. Okay, welcome. So one of the things that we're going to leave you with comes courtesy of Highwire Games. Highwire Games, uh, a bunch of people who worked as Master Chief uh, people, uh, making uh, what was it, Halo and of course Destiny. Um, formula, formerly of Bungie, of course, is making the long-delayed Golem. Golem, which of course we've talked about before, now has a final hard release date, which is set for November 8th. That's about one month out, exclusive for PlayStation VR. Uh, we have talked about this, and this is a title that is long overdue, which has come first announced back in 2015. Nothing has been seen of it, but now it looks like it's finally coming out. We'll see if it holds to those very, very high expectations as something that should have been out long ago is finally now seeing the light of day. Um, and of course, we will let you know how it's been received because something tells us that this might not go the way that they had planned. <laughs> 
Okay, so uh, that would be the end of our show for this week. Thank you for tuning in. Of course, I'd like to thank you all again for, for coming back. Sorry again that there was not much news. I'm still very angry about that. In fact, I'm so angry that I could uh, say stuff, but I don't want to say stuff. I wanted to keep this short. And now it's too short. It's like so short that it's, it's shorter than I originally thought. And now I need some filler. And now I'm just trying to make up stuff for filler. And it's not, not going very well. It's In fact, it's going very horribly. It's going so horribly right now that I'm just stretching for time. It's, it's bad, but, you know, the time is it's going on. You know, have you ever thought about time, by the way? Time is like a little quandary. It's like, never stops. It keeps going. It's even a man-made construct thing. It's not even real. It does, time doesn't exist outside, you know, Anyway, uh, sorry about that. Uh, we just wanted to say thank you all for, for coming here and sh watching our stuff. It's, it means a lot to us. Uh, like, share, subscribe. There's going to be more coming, you know, along the way. We'll wait for, you know, more news. News. News is good. Good news. News. News all the time. Time for news. Time. Well, yeah. It's, we're, anyway, it's about time. Uh, it's about time that we talked about time because time, again, you know, if you get into time, it, it's crazy. It's a hell of a time talking about time. Um, uh, is that good? Yeah? Alright. Anyway, peace.